I've entitled the message this morning, Valuable Vestments, and it connects well with um, the readings about Jesus as our High Priest. I'm going to be reading from John 19, as Jesus executes his office of High Priest, he's both the priest that offers the sacrifice and the sacrifice, and so here it is. Jesus on the cross. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his outer clothing and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier. Also his inner robe. But the robe was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my outer clothing among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clovis and Mary Magdalene. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, draw us close to the Son this day as we consider Him on the cross, how the soldiers divided His garments, but in particular one garment for which they cast lots. What a wondrous garment this is, woven in one piece that they would not tear. Let us reflect on what this garment points to. It points to his office as high priest. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. I suppose at times maybe you've wondered, you know, why some memories um, might resonate stronger than others. And that's certainly the case with myself. I remember one of those teachable moments, my mother teaching me as we were in the car, and I, I think I was driving, and the radio was playing, which was kind of interesting because I grew up with at least two cars that didn't have radios, but this one had a radio, and the, and the radio was playing, and the song was, It Doesn't Matter. And the lyrics went something like this, the clothes you wear doesn't matter, the way you cut your hair doesn't matter, the way you move doesn't matter. Well, what followed was a conversation about how it most certainly does matter. I've had a long time to reflect on that conversation over the years, and I I wonder about God's perspective on such things. Does it matter? Well, absolutely it does matter. My mother is right. What you wear matters. You can dress well, live pure motives to clothe and protect and give dignity to the body that God has given you, or you can have sinful motives as you get dressed, to dress for power, or intimidation, or self-gratification. In the days of Jesus, there were the Levites, there were the priests, the scribes, and Pharisees. They were all sinfully concerned with how it was that they were to be dressed. They do all their deeds to be seen by others. For they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They took great pride in the fact that they had these little leather boxes that they would strap on their foreheads, you know, that had little sections of scripture in them, and they made sure that their tassels were long. The priests also were more concerned of how they looked in their robes than what their robes signified and how God wished to use their robes in his service for the uplifting of all because God gave them that plan 
for their robes and it had great significance. God had his people spend a lot of money on priestly garments for a holy purpose though, to communicate his message and to fulfill the ministry. And God had Moses record using many words in the Old Testament on the nature of these Old Testament priestly robes. Aaron and his sons would be priests. They would minister in the tabernacle and then their descendants would minister in the temple of God. You shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him that he may minister to me as priest. And you shall bring his sons and you shall clothe them with tunics. And if you ever get to that section of the Old Testament, how beautiful were these robes? You know, like a tailor could read these sections of scripture and know exactly how it was going to look, the different colors of the thread even that were to be used in the making of those robes. Because sacrifice was their priestly ministry. Just as the lambs which they sacrificed pointed to the sacrifice of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, so their robes would point forward to Jesus as fulfilling his office of high priest. Behold a mystery here of the high priesthood for Jesus. For Jesus is both priest but he's also sacrifice. The picture on your bulletin cover emphasizes one of the main messages of the whole book of Hebrews is that Jesus is our high priest. But when we consider, especially in this Lenten season, how Jesus was going to the cross, it didn't appear that Jesus looked all that high priestly, did he? He did not wear the golden band around his head that declared, literally it was engraved on the Old Testament priest's uniform. He had a gold band on his head and it declared holiness to the Lord. But instead, Jesus lived holiness so much so that no one, try as they might, could not get witnesses' degree on what the crime was that he committed that was worthy of death. In fact, no one could ever convict Jesus of sin. Period. Jesus did not have bells on the fringes of his garment ringing evidence of his ministries at the altar. Instead, what he had on the altar of the cross, the sky was darkened, and the veil in the temple was torn asunder, and the earth shook. There were a lot of also other outer garments of the high priest, which Jesus never donned. But there was one interesting article of clothing that Jesus had. He had the inner robe, which was retained, and it's mentioned in John's Gospel. You know, you can spend a lifetime reading the Gospels and miss the detail, but every word in the Bible is so important. Every word is inspired. The inner robe, it's one word, the chiton. The inner robe, woven in one piece from top to bottom, Jesus went to the cross with this inner robe on. He went to Calvary wearing a seamless undergarment or tunic, woven from the top to the bottom beneath his outer garments. And John sees great significance in the seamless robe, because he states that it was a seamless robe. He gives us some detail concerning it. 
and at the end that it was in one piece. It was a unique garment. It was a valuable vestment because the tunic worn daily by the men and women in Palestine was not seamless, but instead it was made of two pieces of fabric sewn together. Jesus' robe instead was seamless. It was one piece woven to top to bottom, just like that that the high priest wore. How Jesus could have anything of value like that isn't too much of a wonder when you consider that Jesus was a gracious recipient of gifts. He would be anointed for his death, the very expensive perfume of pure nard, and it would, the perfume, the smell of it would, you know, when it was broken over his head, it was filled the entire home with the smell of this expensive perfume. Jesus would be buried in a rich man's tomb. And throughout his ministry, Jesus would be associated with the lowly, to be certain. And that was his emphasis. But he also rubbed shoulders with everybody. He encountered wealth. He attended weddings. He drank the wine. He took in the special foods that were available. And the women in particular who traveled with him, they're described as the gospel, in the Gospels as providing for all of our Lord's needs. And also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Harold's, Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others, provided for our Lord out of their means. Now our Lord did not live extravagantly, but he was provided for. So it's believable and consistent with Scripture, he had a special garment, a special robe. It was woven from top to bottom in one piece, and the only other one like it that people knew about was that was the similar kind of undergarment that was worn by the high priest. Because the scripture teaches on your bulletin covers, Jesus is our high priest. He's a special high priest because he comes from above, because he comes from God himself. He is a priest, as the epistle reading says, a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 5, verse 6. He's not from the tribe of Levi, where priests ordinarily descend from. Instead, like Melchizedek, who comes from Salem, is really another synonym for Jerusalem. And Jesus was going to Jerusalem. Jesus finds his ministry culminating there as a high priest and as a sacrifice on the cross for our sins. The soldiers strip him of his priestly garment, yet nevertheless he remains gloriously clothed in righteousness. In fact, through his sacrificial work, which no one else could do, he earns a righteousness for us. So through his ministry, Jesus desires to clothe us all with his righteousness. And how does he do so? He institutes holy baptism. He desires for us to be clothed with righteousness through baptism into his death and his resurrection. Sometimes that clothing in righteousness, it takes on a physical representation. So as a pastor, I wear an all. It points to being clothed in righteousness. The righteousness, not of my own, but the righteousness of Christ. Or a person, even if they're very small, and they come to the baptismal font, they're often dressed in a baptismal robe, but to show that they're clothed 
in the righteousness of Christ. We enter into a royal priesthood is what Jesus has in mind for us. And what an honor. This is what God's word reveals concerning the Christ, the very Lamb of God. The people of God sing of it. And they sang a new song. Worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals. John observes in heaven, the book of Revelation. For you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people. You are our God, and we shall reign with you forever and ever. You know, we don't hear too many sermons or even Bible studies about the fact that we are God's people as in the sense that we are a, a, a royal priesthood, but we most certainly are. The dignity is ours in Christ. And why don't we hear about it? I think we don't hear about it so much because the word priest has been sullied. You know, the word priest has been sullied in our days of scandal. Several weeks ago, I spoke to you about how there's a long list of words sullied by this world. Words like priest or soldier, and I think that's the one I preached on. Man, even, and even the term married. These are words that are, you know, brought low in the world. But they are venerable words. Each of the estates are honorable. Each of the titles is honorable. He wants us to be a kingdom of priests, a royal priesthood for him. What great power and status that we have because we are clothed in his righteousness. Jesus Christ redeemed the use of each word. He redeems the use of the word priest. He becomes a most holy and high priest who's able to sacrifice for the sins of the world. And he clothes us in his righteousness in baptism, into his life, death, and resurrection. And what we wear makes all the difference. Aaron and his sons had in God's word detailed instructions to the tailor exactly what they were to wear when they were to carry out their ministry. Uh, we are given a lot more latitude and freedom, Christian freedom, in what we wear externally. However, what we wear and how we wear it is important, especially as it pertains to the service of the Lord. For we are clothed in baptism, we are clothed in His righteousness. We have the most valuable vestments indeed, for they are purchased of the very blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. May we wear it proudly. In his name we pray. Amen. Please rise for a blessing.